Here's another exciting morning in beekeeping life. We've just had a phone call from the post office and the queens have arrived that we've ordered from over in the Bunyip Bee Company. So we're just scooting into town to grab them. And um, yeah, so then we'll do some splits this afternoon. Well, we'll probably set up some, some splits because it's going to be jolly hot here again in the Riverland as it does. And then tomorrow morning we'll get the girls organised and change up a few hives down at the bush. We should be cool. And so anyway, exciting times. Here we go, getting the ladies. Just thought I'd show you the sign. So that if the cameraman has to film from a distance, because you know he's not, not authorised. <laughs> cool, thank they've you been, very much. They've been chilling out in the air anyway. They've been relaxing, that's the yeah. way. Get them done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thanks champ. We'll probably Norris. have another lot next week, so no, we should be all good. Deliver quickly. The first lot of these I ordered took them a week and a half to get in, <laughs> so that was a bit of a worry. They were looking a bit sad, but these are really good now. We order, order them and they ship them on Monday and we get them on Wednesday. So it's pretty amazing that they can send that crap in the post though, isn't it? Isn't that pretty cool? Check this out. Live queens. It'd be a bit crap if they were dead queens, wouldn't it? But anyway. Apparently, if you listen just right, but they might not do it, but they sometimes the queens do what's called piping because they're singing to the to their new friends. But more often than not, they're in singing there in the hive. They go do a little got a different sound buzzing. But anyway, we'll go and unwrap the little ladies, put them in the house because it's going to be a lovely warm day here today. See, they've got just a normal post pack and they've got a little air holes cut in it. Little triangles, so they can let the air in. Pretty clever, isn't it? Okay, here comes the big unveiling. See if the quick delivery worked. Heck, these are my wife's chicken cutting scissors. Oh, look at that. It's a mystery. They're in toilet rolls, that's why they're different. <laughs> We're going straight down the toilet. <laughs> oh, well. Normally they're in like cool little packets. That's pretty cool. Ta-da! What are you doing to me, Ned? How the fuck did he get them in the air so clever? That's pretty smart, isn't it? Here we go, here we go. Look at them go! Look at them go, guys! So how cool is that? He's put them in toilet rolls this time, like to protect them. Quite often they're like in a, just a longer box. I don't know, I suppose a proper postage box. Well, this is kind of cool. Now what we're going to do, being that it's going to be crazy hot here today, I think we'll just put them out and we'll get ourselves set up and do the transfer tomorrow morning. But so far they look good. Do you like these little boxes that they come in? How cool is that? How cool is that? That's the wax flakes that they, that they normally would make that you normally don't see because in the hive, by the time they flake them off, and then they roll them into the ball to make their honeycomb and brood comb. But they must have been so well fed that on the way here they've made some wax flakes that have been lost in, well, all over my wife's kitchen table, so she'll be real pleased. But how cool are that? Look at that. That's really awesome. You know, it's interesting because I was reading the book, Dr. Langsworth, the original beekeeper man who wrote the first book in the 1850s, which is pretty cool. His mate, someone with an N, Nord, Nord. Anyway, his mate did an experiment to find out, because the beekeepers of old didn't know how they made wax. And so they thought they was collecting um, saps from the pine trees and from the other trees and mixing it with pollen and creating the wax comb. But it turns out that when they're well fed, they just make flak, wax flakes that come off their bodies. And then they all collect them up and roll them into a ball and then they shape them into the honeycomb that we use today. So how amazing creatures are these things? Tell you what. Nice to be loved by your family. My dear daughter is concerned about me down here in the heat with my bee suit, getting dehydrated. So she got me this camel back, which is what they use when they go bike riding. And so I can fill it up with water and obviously put it on my back. And I got my little sucky hose here. I don't really know how that works, but we'll find out. Looks like a contort. Hello, hello, hello. Give me some water, give me some water. No, maybe I don't know. Do you suck on that or what do you do? That's gonna be weird. It tastes like plastic. Hang on, what's that on-off button? That's fucking cool. Anyway, 
So she's gonna keep me alive, she reckons, down here in the desert. So I'm gonna, so if you see me sucking on my little tube, you'll know what's going on. So we're just gonna set this up and put some brood frames above the queen excluder so we can come down here tomorrow and do some splits. I would do it all in the one go, but it's so jolly hot here. We'll do it to this afternoon and get ourselves set up. And tomorrow morning, we'll just come down and whack them together, cart them around to their new home and be done with it. So hopefully, we don't get too many bee stings while we get this organized. <laughs> And these girls are about ready for an explosion. See what I mean? They're a bit more excitable. They're ready for a top, aren't they? Oh, we better remember that tomorrow. So we got to bring, which has probably been on the agenda for a little while. We can bring a super down for this one. We might even steal some out of there, but that's yet to be determined. So if you remember young Bill down in Adelaide who caught these swarms for us, these are his bees, and they are going off tap down here in the bush. Look at them go. They're actually, I think they're, the downside to them is they're a little angry and but they're bloody awesome at getting the honey in. Um, and I just found a queen cell in this one here and it's late in the summer, so they're thinking about racking off. So it's good we're doing a split with them. So yeah, I don't know, we we'll have to watch an eye, keep a close eye on them during the spring. But I was gonna like requeen them completely, but they're so productive, I'm almost tempted to put up with their angriness. So unless one of us gets stung to death, We'll keep them going, I think. <laughs> well, mainly because I want to get some more bees and I, and I was just sort of thin these girls out a little bit because they're a little bit grumpy. But hell, they're pretty productive. Well, they've done a good job down here. They've got a nice lot of honey, but they're just a little bit cranky. <laughs> That's why we're just going to take a few frames off and just use their brood pretty much to make a split. Shit, that's heavy. Now you see them really get crazy, get into the brood nest. This is why you gotta do something about it, because it won't work. What have we got down here? <gasps> Holy smokes, look at that lot. Hello, hello everybody. Who's excited? You are now. Do that. Give it there. You see they're a bit toey this lot. Really suck of your killer in this project. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to get some new leaders tomorrow. So we're going to do, just to take the nukes out of some of them, and this one we're going to make three splits, I reckon, out of what's in there, because there's a fair few bees in there. And then we'll have some happy new bees. That's the plan, anyway. So here we are, next day, we've got our girls on board, stuck them in a shopping bag. Well, it's a thermal line shopping bag, so it's all good. And we're heading down to heading down to the scrub to get these splits organised. It should be good. We're trying to get a bit organised, and we've got a reasonably early start. Except some twat forgot the smoker, so we had to go home for that, which is really great. But anyway, so it's near on 10 o'clock, and it's 35 degrees already. Hang on, 36 degrees already. My goodness me! So it's supposed to be 44 here in the Riverland today, so that'll be just dandy. So we're hoping that we'll be back in the shade by the time we get all this done. Just another day here in paradise. I don't know how bloody hot it is. I think it was 36 when we got out of the car. So we thought we'd better leave the air conditioning on for the ladies, but of course, we're not gonna get air conditioned. My cameraman's not really impressed about the fact that he's out here in the heat. But anyway, here we are. Because the bees turn up and things have gotta happen. So I've got the cooling on. The ladies are in a shopping bag in the back seat. 
So they're chilling out, they're having a good time, and we're getting hot, so we're gonna get this shit done so we can get out of here. After yesterday when we put the um, brood comb on top of the queen excluders, so we've come down here to, we've brought our queens with us. We're just gonna take these brood frames off and we're gonna place them in these new boxes and hopefully there'll be enough nurse bees to keep the new queen rocking. And of course there's plenty of brood, so hopefully there's enough to hatch all that out. And yeah, shit, they should take off and like, it's basically the same principle as we did at home when we were making a queenless split. But these girls are gonna get a queen because I'm, you know, some of these are a bit angry and I don't necessarily wanna propagate from this particular breed, but I, I'm quite impressed with how much honey they're producing. They're just a bit crazy. You don't want to smoke them too much because you really don't want to chase the, queen, the bees back down into under the queen excluder. The idea is to get the nurse bees at the top of the hive. So, you know, they get a bit toey when you do that, but it's better than them running away from you. So we're just going to take the four frames out the middle of these boxes that we're going to transfer into. So hopefully we'll put the brood in the middle Bit of honey either side, and they've got some extra frames to expand into. If you really get excited, you can put some, make up some boards or a bit of cardboard and put in there, um, you know, so they're a bit more confined. I've done that before and come back and they've eaten the cardboard out. So, you know, if you're gonna do that, don't stuff around and leave it for a month. Whoop, look at that. That's oh, looking pretty good. There's a few ladies at the top. Getting bloody stung at the minute. Where are we? Any idea which one we're looking for? <laughs> Have a look at this. That's why we're not really using these bees because they're a bit fucking crazy. Look at them, they're a psycho. We're just gonna take these couple of frames out of here. So we've got some nurse bees. I just make sure I got the right one. This one might be, this is a honey frame here. Come on. Bloody hell, Harry. <laughs> God. You wouldn't think such little creatures could make such a big mess, would you? Or is that us that are making the mess? These guys are all nice and neat and tidy. See, there's some nice nurse bees. I'll put it in there. The extra ones, yeah, that's just for a bit of honey. So they got something to eat while they get organized. Because they'll freak out and stay a bit confined in here for a little while. So they'll get themselves a bit excited. Cause they're like, fuck, we had, a, we had a big house before with other girls and shit was going in all good directions. It's no wonder they bloody bite us humans though, is it? Come here and fuck with them. <laughs> so, you know, I reckon I'd bite me as well. These ones are just to replace the ones we just took out. So they got something to work on. And yeah, of course you see when you bang them, they do like not like getting banged. One thing about them, they're not banging. They're not liking that bit, the banging bit. Of these lock things. Somebody clever farmer, I'll bet you. Okay, well, we're just going to load these up. Obviously, we've got the splits off now, so we're going to take them to a different spot just because I, I don't actually want them here. You can just leave them here, it won't really matter, but I don't want to keep them here, so I want to put them somewhere else. But how do we figure out which ones we take to where, I don't know. We'll work that out in a minute. So, this box we're going to put at the other end. Because I forgot to bring one for that one that needs supering down here. But luckily enough, we had enough frames left over. So well, maybe I did plan it. See, perhaps it was all in the plan. <laughs> I don't think the lad believes me, but you know, possible. It's possible that it was part of the plan. Anyway, that should give them a bit more room to play. Pop that bit of that there. Don't fight me. Oh. The reason the father of beekeeping, you know, Mr. Langsworth, who made these cool frames up and did all this cool shit. It's a really cool book because it's like written for people that don't, well, they're not necessarily convinced that modernized beekeeping is a good idea. So anyway, the cool thing is he was saying that maybe God gave bees a sting because otherwise everybody be eating their honey and they'd die out. So maybe that's the plan. So that not all of us are silly enough to go and do this crap. <laughs> I don't know, what do you reckon? Is that possible? Just to clarify, Mr. Langsford was a, I think he was a monk or a, 
Catholic priest sort of dude in the monastery doing stuff, which they did a lot of back in the day. They were they were cool beekeepers back in the day, I suppose. Wow, I suppose they had nothing else to do, did they? <laughs> Oh, I should have given you that job. Righty-o, cheeky babes, here we are at the new little, your new little destination. Oh, they're making a bit of noise. <laughs> this is our stand that we made here a little while ago. She settled in a little bit. I might actually lift that post up there because I wanted it leaning forward, so she's not done too bad. But of course, a bloke didn't get back here and make the other one, so we're only halfway organized. So we had a few more bees than we needed, so. Next week, we might dig some holes. My offside, I said he's a bit too slack to do it with his hands, so here we are, we have to come back another day. <laughs> right, now, let's see. Oh, one little one. What's that? This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had honey. Hopefully this little, hopefully all the little piggies have honey. <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? I'll put that down here. Oh. Oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to say that word. That's the heavy belly hive. When I put this stand here, I thought it was going to be in the shade, but it's still a bit jolly hot here. <whistles> Hopefully we're still alive in here. Here's our ladies. Ooh, swimming around in my shiny silver bag. Now, I reckon I might just go and grab a pair of gloves, just because they're going to get a bit cranky ass when I take the lids off. I guess we might as well start at the beginning. So now the go is, of course, we've got our ladies in here that we just did a minute ago. We've got our frames and some bees and our queens are in our little cages. So the idea is you pop your little cage in the box of bees and then they should take about three days to eat through the little wax fit and then away you go. And hopefully when we come back here in a month or so, they'll be up and rocking. Yeah, they're a little bit distressed about why the fact that we've, what the fuck we've done to them. So here you got the little honeycomb. Well, it's basically a candy that they've made. So out of sugar and maybe they heated it up a bit. And then you just want to pop that in your in your hive. And then the the bees in here are obviously eating on this. And then the girls will eat this way to get them out. And then um, away you go. I don't know whether we should let the air in or not. It's probably more expensive than making your own queens, obviously. But the goal is you get a get a different bloodline. Like these girls are a little bit shitty ass. So I'm trying to make a bit better blood or a bit better, you know, breeding. If these girls are proper bred bees. So these have been young William from the Bunyip bees. He's got these and he's bred them in a nice environment so they're nice and purebreds. And so those queens will send their genetic, they've already been mated, so they'll send their genetics into this colony and you'll end up with nice, beautiful, relaxed, hopefully productive bees. So far, it's been a successful little project. We've even got one queen left over. <laughs> I just noticed the girls, as soon as you put the new queen in there, their hum changes. They seem to hum a bit different. They're like, they're very really quiet, a bit nervy, and now they're sort of like going, ooh, ooh, a new boss. And they're all sort of singing a different song. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? So we thought we'd come back here with our extra queen and have a look in this box. We were going to do it without these suits on, but they don't like us, so we'll just lift this lid up and see what's going on. Let's have a look what's going on. Not a big population, but 
I reckon there'll be enough in that middle there. I'm just looking at how many are in here and I'm guessing there'll be a, still a few field bees out flying around. So there's probably enough in this centre bit with the two bits we had left behind. So we'll put the girl in there and see what she does. She's got to go somewhere so she can go here. Pop that back together. And then all the field bees come back. And they get her out of there. They should adopt her and away they go. Then all we gotta do is remember to move this one. <laughs> hey. Oh. I think that all went really good. Like, but we'll find out in about a week and a half or so as to see whether how many queens got accepted. Um, apart from the fact that the weather's been a bit against us, I think it's all pretty cool. Of course, we've had yet another excitement. We've got to bring some water down for the new site because apparently the emus ain't drank it all. Here's a couple of the hives that we requeened the other other week when we were mucking around here. We'll have a look at some little nukes we've got up there as well. They've been quite good. But we'll have a poke ahead in here while we're here. These girls were really angry. That's why I put some nice new Italian queens with them so they can chill out a bit. I'd say one thing about these styrofoam boxes, it would be most advantageous not to put the smoker on the lid because I think they might get a little bit excited. Tin lids, all good. Plastic foamy lids, all bad. Give it a go, so that bit going on in here. It's starting to expand a little bit. What's going on in here? It be a bit gentle because they're only, only a young little colony, so we don't want to stir them up too much because they're just trying to build them up for the winter. It's coming together all right, I reckon. So it's not much on that side, but on this side, she's got a nice pattern going. Oh, there she goes. She's going off to hide now. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is lose her after all that effort. <laughs> Some of these bees are still a bit towy, but as you can see, we've got that lovely little relaxed Italian queen, so they start, they're definitely calmed down a lot because when we did the split, they were blubbing, trying to eat me. Now they're busy just looking after themselves. Um, so give it another month and this new lot of brood that's in there hatches out and they'll all be beautiful and transferred over and they should be much easier to work But I'm still like the whole genetic mix of having a few of these crazy um, Wild bees, but not the ones that are so wild that you can't work them mm. Oh, these girls have started a new queen. They must have lost her lost her because that's what happens too Sometimes you get the new and she doesn't live very long but she keeps a genetic code going. Look at that, we've got quite a lot of queen cells there. Looks like the new queen is, um, hasn't lived very long, but she's laid a few eggs here because they didn't have any brew to make anything with. And this is a month down the track anyway, so she might not have made it, but she's laid some nice queen cells there. So we've got one, two, three, four that I can see, which is kind of groovy because we've got a new cup here that I'm not sure, I don't think the queen made it, so we might cut one of those cells out and put it in their box. That'd be kind of cool. So these are the splits that we did in the next week after that in the little nuke boxes. I'm really sure that one there lost its queen. So we might have a look in there, see what they're up to. And if so, we could steal one of those new queen cells in the hope that that will work. The other day when I was here stuffing around checking these, a bloke didn't bring any markers or any way to um, decide which box was which. And so I thought, well, just in case the bloke doesn't remember that this was the box that the queen didn't take in, I thought I'd put a little marker in there. So, you know, there are always available shotgun shells around this place. They're still a bit feral because- These are still the ones that have hatched out and were put in here and hatched out from the seeds that we put in or the, the eggs or the, there she is. Look at that. There she goes. How gorgeous does she look? $33.50. You can have one of them. I don't know what she's doing over here on the honey. So you never know where they're going to be. So she's probably having a bit of a feed. Now we're going to have to get her back in the box without doing anything stupid. Cool. Now so much for them never being out on the honey. That would suck if we killed her, wouldn't it, after all that effort? <laughs> Sorry, in another month. 
before we get too much further into the harvest, we'll come down here and put these girls in bigger boxes. There you go, there's where she's been working. Got a nice little pattern going on. Now all of them should be nice, friendly Italian bees when they hatch out. But you see how f***ed up those plastic foundations are? They just don't quite do it right. It makes it too hard for them, I reckon, anyway. I think this is looking good. She's got a nice pattern going got a nice pattern going on so by the time they hatch out I reckon in another week or two and then we have another lap so within by the end of this month these girls will be packed this box out to, to blazes so one other interesting thing if you're not really it, well okay if you've got one of those hives flow hivey things and you're not really sure and you don't want to pull the thing apart and you want to know how they're going for breeding if you look at when they land and they come into the hive if there's a percentage of them a higher percentage bringing pollen in on their legs you see how that one's going in she's got the bit of pollen on her legs you'll see them quite a lot and that means they're breeding well generally not always I mean, it's not 100 percent science but generally they'll get more pollen when they're trying to raise some more brood that's so a good sign